Chapter 9 of God Died at Three O'Clock by Rev. Gerald T. Brennan. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Maria Therese. His Mother. You must go to the cross. The Son of God must die like a criminal. He will be nailed to a cross. Jesus hears the cruel words of Pilate, but says nothing. Closing his eyes, Jesus sees the happenings of the past three years flash through his mind. He sees the ten lepers whom he cured, the dead man whom he brought back to life, the five thousand whom he fed by a miracle, the blind beggar to whom he gave sight. He sees himself entering Jerusalem while the people cheer and call him a king. Where are all these people today? Now Christ is friendless. Now he is only enemies. Alone and hated, he stands a prisoner, condemned to death. Jesus is willing to die. He is willing because it is his father's wish. Jesus finds no fault with the sentence of death. There is no hatred in his heart. Instead, he pities Pilate. He is sorry for his enemies, Caiaphas and the Jewish leaders. Jesus stands in the courtyard, ready and waiting for the cross. In a few minutes, two of the soldiers step forward and take the scarlet cloak from Christ's shoulders. Then the prisoner is given back his own clothes. He covers his wounded and bleeding body with a journey to death. Now the crowd is anxious to see the end. The day is growing warm, and the slight delay makes many impatient. Suddenly the crowd is silent. Every eye turns from Christ to watch the soldiers dragging out a heavy cross. The soldiers push their way through the crowd and lay the cross upon the ground at Christ's feet. Jesus looks at this evil cross and says nothing. Soon he will be nailed to this cross. Soon he will die upon it in shame. But this ugly cross of shame will also be Christ's sign of victory. Long after his death, this cross will stand in every corner of the world. This cross will be the sign of hope and joy to all men. The cross of Christ will preach hatred for sin and love for God. The story of the cross will be the story of God's love for the world. The soldiers place the cross upon Christ's shoulders. It is a heavy load for a weak man to carry, but Jesus manages the load without help. He follows the soldiers and guards as they lead him through the streets of Jerusalem. The city is crowded with visitors. Men, women, and children stand in the narrow streets to watch the strange procession. Some of the people sneer, others laugh, a few wonder. Who is this man who carries the cross? What wrong has he done? Many times Jesus has walked through these same city streets. He knows them well. He knows every shop. He knows every corner. Now he is walking through Jerusalem for the last time. Each step brings him closer to Calvary, the gloomy place outside the city walls where criminals are put to death. Jesus staggers slowly under the heavy cross. He has come only a short distance on his sorrowful journey. Now he stumbles and falls flat to the ground, weak and exhausted. He lies still in the dirt of the road. The crowd shouts and laughs and urges him to get up, but the cross is too heavy. Jesus tries to rise, but the cross holds him down. The soldiers lift the cross, and Jesus gets slowly to his feet. They give him no chance to rest. Once again, the cross is placed upon his shoulders. Tired, weak, and dizzy from hunger and thirst, and the whipping he has had, Jesus stumbles on with his heavy load. Now and then, Christ glances at the people who line the streets. He searches through blood-filled eyes for one kindly face. But these faces staring at him show mostly hate. Some show scorn, some show fear, only a few show pity. At the corner of a narrow alley, Jesus halts his slow and painful steps. At last he sees before him some friendly figures. Standing in the street is his mother Mary. With her are his apostle John and other friends. Mother and son, it is a bitter meeting for both of them. Mary is losing Christ. The soldiers are taking him away to death. What will the mother and son say to each other? What can they say? Mary does not speak. Neither does Christ. Each knows the thoughts of the other. They need no words. They speak only with their eyes, only with their hearts. The soldiers push Christ onward. Again, he seems to lose his balance and almost falls, but somehow he is able to steady himself. 
He is losing strength rapidly, and the soldiers watch him closely. Will their prisoner be able to reach Calvary? Will he die in the street and cheat the cross? If Christ is to be saved for death on Calvary, someone must help him carry the cross the rest of the way. He is too weak now to carry it alone. The soldiers look at the crowd along the road. Who will help Christ carry his cross? No Jew wants to share the shame. Certainly no Roman. One of the guards sees a man standing in the crowd, whose clothes show that he is not a Jew, neither is he a Roman. This stranger is Simon from Cyrene in North Africa. Simon has come to Jerusalem on a visit, and today he has been drawn by curiosity to watch the man carrying the cross. So Pilate's soldiers seize this Simon of Cyrene. They drag him roughly out of the crowd and order him to help Jesus with the cross. But Simon refuses. He argues. He has done no wrong. Why then should he be treated like a criminal? Why should he carry a cross through the streets of Jerusalem? Why should he suffer in shame? The soldiers do not argue with the stranger. They force him to carry the cross upon which Christ will die. Simon of Cyrene walks in shame behind Christ. But some day Simon will be proud of this honor, proud that he was chosen to walk in the bloodstained footsteps of Jesus Christ on this Friday morning. When this day is ended, only Simon, the stranger, can boast, I carried the cross of Christ. End of chapter 9